There we go. All right, folks, we're down here in Florida. It's been raining all night long. We've got a little break in the showers, and so we're gonna head out into the woods and see if we can't get a friction fire started. Now, these are some of the most difficult conditions to start a fire by friction. Not only is everything in the woods wet, but down here in the southeast, you've got super high humidity, and that translates into high moisture content of the materials that we're gonna be working with. This is a world of difference between down here in the southeast and down in the desert southwest where everything is bone dry. And to make things even more interesting and realistic, I'm using only my Leatherman P4 to get this done. So I've got an Eastern Red Cedar here, and this is a great, great resource to find for making fire. Um, basically, it has everything that you need to make a fire except for the cordage. Now, what we're gonna use this tree for is to find some dry tinder. The inside bark, when it's dry, you can fluff it up and it makes a great tinder ball. But one of the biggest challenges, probably the biggest challenge in building a friction fire in conditions like this where it's everything is wet is finding really dry really fine tinder so i'm just poking around this tree trying to find somewhere that's sheltered from the weather and i look underneath these branches and it's rained so much and so heavily that the rain is just kind of filtered around the outside and ran around the outside and collected on the most of these underside of these branches and so it's difficult to find good dry material there but there's this little hollow it looked like maybe at one time there was a branch that came out there and broke off but right here there's just a little bit of dry bark in there so i'm going to very carefully try to get some of that stuff out and then put it in my pocket immediately before it gets wet oh that's going to be good stuff right there So that right there is exactly what we need. It's just, it's even a little bit dusty. Perfect. So at the base of these pines, you can often find little scars and things where the sap will ooze out to help protect itself. There's a place right here uh, where we can get some sap. Now, most people think of pine sap as being sticky, and it is, it's very sticky, but it's also an oil, and so when you get it hot, it can actually act as a lubricant, and that's how we're gonna use this. I've got a an elderberry right here an elderberry is very very good for starting friction fires if you can find a dead piece and we got one right here i'm going to give this a try but i think it might be too wet so i can just looking at the ends of this, I can tell the moisture has really soaked into it. I don't know if you can see the color difference or not. On the outside, it's darker, and then it gets lighter as it moves in. All of that darker stuff is moisture that's creeped into this thing. And so, unfortunately, I think the moisture content in this uh, is going to be too high just to use it for part of our friction fire set but i'm gonna go ahead and stick it in my pocket because i've already cut it and we're gonna have to go back here and find a, uh, a piece of standing dead atlantic white cedar and just make our whole set out of that so what i'm looking for is a standing dead atlantic white cedar 
and I want it standing straight up or as straight up as I can find because something that's standing straight up is going to intercept less rain as the rain falls. If you get something that's, that's fallen over, um, all that rain falls on top of that tree and it soaks in. It's just gonna be a higher uh, moisture content in that wood. And so finding something that's standing straight up is just gonna be drier. But I also need something that is small enough so that I can cut part of the way through it and then break it the rest of the way. So I'm looking for something in the three to four inch uh, diameter range. So this one right here looks like it might suit her needs. It's standing relatively straight up. It's maybe three inches diameter and it's pretty sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't cut this thing maybe right here or right down here and break it off. Now I want to cut about halfway through this tree and then break it the rest of the way off because I'm trying to open up a split down the middle of this wood so that I can get to that interior where it's going to be a little bit drier. And that cedar just smells so good. All right. So I think I might have to actually try to saw it all the way into up here because the, the top, it's so thick in here that the top's kind of caught up and I don't think I'm gonna be able to put enough leverage on it to, to get it broken down. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the top completely off. I'll bring you guys back when I get it done. Come on, there we go. So all of that wood in there should be dry or as dry as we're going to get in conditions like this. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't knock this off too, just to have a little bit more dry wood to work with. There we go. All right, so there should be enough wood in this and this to get a small fire going. So we'll do our, our fireboard and our spindle out of this and then probably just split some of this remaining stuff up for, uh, for our actual firewood and our tinder. Grab my raincoat and we'll just get going. So we need a couple more things. Uh, we need a handhold and we need something to act as the bow for our bow drill. And I think I can get both of those pieces out of this little privet here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off down here and then up here, and then we'll take all our stuff, start working on things and building our friction fire set. So this looks like a pretty good place. I've got this big overhanging branch and the underside of it is actually really dry. And so I'm just gonna scratch out a spot right here, just a little level spot, just to do my work and get the fire going. Once I get it going, I'm gonna move it away from the base of this tree. So it's not raining real hard right now. And so I'm just gonna lay my raincoat down here and as I get things done, any kind of shavings that I have or when I get my spindle and fireboard done, I'm just gonna tuck it in here to keep it dry. Plus I was about to have a heat stroke in there because it's about 115% humidity and about 85 degrees down here in Florida. So one thing with these Atlantic white cedar is 99% of the time they have a lot of twist in the grain as it goes up the tree. And just so you can see, this one starts on a plane like this and kind of rolls this way. And so we're gonna have to flatten this off to make a fireboard. 
it'd be super helpful if I had a little hatchet or an ax or something like that, but I'm trying to do this uh, minimalist. And so all I'm gonna use on this build is my Leatherman. So I'm gonna have to make a fireboard. We're gonna have to make a spindle and hollow out our handhold. I'll take you through the whole process. Pop out my utility blade. And so by doing it that way, I save myself a lot of carving. So if you're watching closely, you're noticing that my, the blade on my Leatherman is just kind of flopping around. That's because I finally, after years of batoning this thing and splitting stuff, I broke the little locking piece off the back of the blade. It made me sad, but this thing has taken a lot of abuse to, uh, and finally just kind of gave it up, but still works. I'll probably end up getting another one and just replacing the blade. These things have a lifetime warranty on them. You can just send them back or send them in and they'll send you a new one, I think. Um, but I don't know, this one's got some sentimental value. And so I'll probably just suck it up, buy another one, take it apart, put a new blade in there and keep rocking. So these little shavings that are coming off here, these are going to be super valuable. So I just want to pick them up whenever I can before they get wet. I'm going to stick them in my raincoat here. Keep them dry. All right, so I'm about to get started on the spindle. Now I'm gonna use my Leatherman, the blade on my Leatherman, and I'm gonna baton a piece out of this. This is how I broke my Leatherman, so word of caution. Uh, this is not recommended, but if you need to, this thing, like I said before, it'll actually stand up to some pretty heavy duty abuse. Actually, the reason I broke it is because I was trying to baton a very hard, dense piece of wood. Shouldn't have been doing it, but that's what happened. So I'm just going to cut this midsection out right here and that's what we're going to use for the spindle. This stuff will come in handy for firewood. So some of you might have comments about this flopping around like that. It's dangerous, you know, it could close on my hand. I realize that. And so if I ever do any kind of uh, pushing down like that, I'm very conscious of putting pressure back into the blade so it doesn't do that. But I don't know, I'll end up fixing it before long.
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my fireboard, my hearth board, and just make a little divot in here. And then we'll have to burn that out and then cut our notch. Just gonna put a couple little notches in the, this bow to help hold the string. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just use a piece of paracord. If I didn't have paracord, one of the things I always do when I get a new pair of boots is I replace the laces with a piece of paracord. And so all I'd have to do is take my boot lace off, use it to start the fire, put the boot lace back on. But, so I don't have to take my boot laces off, I'm just gonna use a piece of paracord that I have in my pocket. So I want the string on this bow relatively loose because I want to make at least two wraps around my spindle and that's going to help keep it from slipping when I really have to put a lot of pressure on this thing. All right, so we're all set up to burn our fireboard in. I've got my little divot. I've got the uh, spindle loaded into the bow. Now I'm just gonna take a little piece of this pine sap that we collected earlier and just put it right into the handhold or the bearing block divot right there. Now that's gonna be real sticky at first, but once it heats up, it's gonna get slick. It's gonna help reduce friction at that point. Now, I'm not trying to start a fire right now. I'm just trying to create the fireboard. That might take a while because everything's really damp right now. But we're generating heat. And when we're generating heat, we're also drying things out. I can see I'm gonna have to get rid of that little piece of shrub right there. So we're starting to get a little bit of dust and a little bit of smoke. That's good. All right. So again, being very careful, keep everything dry. I'm going to put my spindle back in the jacket so it stays dry. So the next thing I have to do is take my Leatherman and cut a notch almost to the center of this hole, but not quite there. Now that's gonna give our dry dust, which is gonna be the fuel for the coal, a place to collect. So we've got all of our components ready to make a fire except for our tinder bundle. And I've said this before in previous fire making videos, but before you start your first attempt to make a fire, make sure you have all of the materials that you need right here at hand and make sure that you have plenty of them. Because if you get halfway through, if you get a coal going and you get your tinder bundle going, but you can't transfer that fire into a bigger fire to actually make something that's gonna keep you warm or cook or whatever, then you have wasted a tremendous amount of resources, time, energy, and if you're in a real life survival situation, that could be absolutely demoralizing, especially if you've taken hours to collect what you've already got. So make sure that you have enough tinder. Now I'm pretty limited on what I can use for tinder here, um, it would have been ideal if I could have gone out before the rain, uh, collected some dry grass, some dry uh, boughs, things like that, but that's not the point of this video. And so I'm gonna have to make tinder from this stuff right here. And so what I'm gonna do is use a trick that I've shown in a previous video. I'm gonna stick this knife in here if I can do it without stabbing myself with this floppy blade. 
Again, not a recommended use for a Leatherman, but we're gonna make it work. So I've got this piece of cedar that I split off. Now I'm just going to kind of take shavings off of this. It's actually starting to drizzle a little bit more right now. So I'm making sure that I've got everything covered up. All right, so I think we're pretty much ready to go. I've got what I think is gonna be enough um, tinder and uh, kindling to get the fire going. I'm kind of cutting corners here because I'm obviously not in a, a real survival situation. And so I'm going bare minimum here because I don't want to spend all day sitting here processing materials. But I'm gonna have one shot at this because if I burn up those materials, I'm gonna have to go back and start the whole process over again, preparing those things. Now, one thing that I anticipate might happen is I might, oops. I may end up snagging the coat with the, um, with the bow here. So if I do that, I'm gonna have to reposition everything. Now, when I first start this, I'm not trying to start a fire. I'm just heating things up. I'm drying things out and I'm trying to build dust. Once I get things dried out, and it might take a little while, once I get things dried up, I'm gonna start building dust in my notch. Once that happens, once my notch is filled up with dry dust, then I'm gonna apply the pressure, which is gonna generate the heat, which is gonna make the coal. So at first, I'm just kinda of going, going slow. Saving energy, just heating things up. Oops, see, that's what I was worried about. Dang it. Whew. Start over. Nobody said this was going to be easy. Let's start over with new dust, too. All right, my notch is filled up. Put a little more pressure, a little more speed. Do we have it? I think so. So I know I've got a coal in there because I have got a steady stream of smoke coming out of my dust. Now I'm not in a huge hurry here. Don't need to panic. That thing's going to burn for a while. It's actually going to grow inside of that bunch of dust right there. And so I've got time to get my tender bundle. Now, the trick here is to transfer that coal into this tinder bundle without dropping it. I'm actually going to just put that right there. Carefully. Now I'm going to put this in here in case I do have to start over, just keep it dry. So I've got a little coal inside of this. 
Now this is a very small tinder bundle. So I'm just gonna gently wrap. And blow very gently. I'm just trying to grow this coal. Got flame. Oh. Nice. I like it. Ah, get that going. Take some of our kindling. Now this is, admittedly, this, this part of this video is gonna be very sloppy. I wouldn't normally do it this way. I would have, I'd be much more organized if I were in the woods, but I'm not. So again, if I was in the woods, I was camping or in a survival situation or something like this, I would have all of my firewood here ready to go, but I'm just gonna put this thing out. I'm not gonna build a bigger fire with it. I just wanted to get a fire going. So just keep that in mind. When you're out there, just make sure that you have everything that you need to get the fire going and then keep the fire going uh, ready at hand. All right, so as I said, it is, it's probably close to 90 degrees out here. It's really high humidity. So I'm gonna get away from this fire. If you guys haven't, subs yeah, get smoke in my eyes. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so, doing stuff like this all the time. And we've got a bunch of great adventures coming up this summer and fall. So see you on the next adventure.